be silenced. Right click. Oh, this is the right click. For surrounding, and he gets it on the DK. Jesus. There's no TP for him anymore. He's got oh, it. Four, That's four, locked four. in. Oh my God! Get those oh apart. This is not a fight that Kiwi Kaki can win here in the upper right. Can he win it somewhere else? Oh, but this God. is a moon. Does he have enough damage? Oh. He must calculate this. Oh, get no this. way. Last I'm serious. Second. Right click, happy! How can you save this DK? You have no resources for a potion! Try to nuke, try to nuke, doesn't work, step out! Funny composition, not the right one by Johnny Cage! Stormboat, oh, the priest is it! Perfect shockwave, you don't have much time, you don't have much time! Shockwave, here we go! One more right click, one more right click! Lin, Guagua, oh! lost! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show match that we've all been waiting for weeks in the works and now it's finally time. Norwegian Whale Show Match. It's the two best Warcraft players on the planet, the best undead, the best orc and they're clashing for 1500 US dollars. Happy versus Lynn everybody in a full best of seven. One of these, oh, both of these competitors have $400 guaranteed. Every single map win gives them an extra $100. We're gonna start on Concealed Hill, and then it's loser's choice from there on out. Streamers from all over the world are flooding the lobby. We have an exciting map pool, if you ask me. We got a little bit of a mix of classic and new maps. We got a mix of micro maps, macro maps, we got it all. Concealed Hill is our starting point. Lost Temple, Northern Isles, Shattered Exile, Springtime, Turtle Rock, and Twisted. Currently waiting for Lin to join the lobby, and then we're good to go. Thank you for the subs, X Kevin, you, Celereth, and Sep Surin. How will the series go today? What are the odds for a complete wipe and a 7 0 on Happy Side? It's possible! It's definitely possible! Thank you, Clemens, for the 41 month resub! This, of course, only possible thanks to one of the biggest donors to the stream, that is Norwegian Whale. He has gifted us lots and lots of subs in the past, and now he's here with 1500 US dollars for the contestants. We're gonna play every single map. It doesn't matter. It's not over when one player hits four. No, no. Here's the tale of the tape, everybody. Are these the two greatest players in the past couple of years in Warcraft 3? I definitely think so. Happy paving the way, raising the bar for absolutely everyone in the scene. If you want to win a tournament in Warcraft 3, you have to go through him. He is throwing... 250 ELO points above everyone else. And Lin fell off a little bit recently, eh? But maybe that was just uh, saving strats for this one, for the big one. I wonder if you would love to play this on the new PTR. Gonna let the contestants know that things are up. Uh. All right, and Lin has arrived. Lin defeated Happy recently on ladder with human. And we'll see where this goes. Uh, wait for one more OP. As uh, everybody is interested in this match, of course. Man, it's so cool that this worked out. I got the email by Norwegian Whale, who is the sponsor of this, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And it was a little bit of a back and forth to get the terms and conditions done for this match. But it's here. It's done. And especially Lost Temple and Shattered Exile. I'm very excited for that one. So who are you rooting for, everybody? 
Do you want the Emperor to throne once again? Or do you... Is it, all, is it an upset win? I think it would be an upset win, wouldn't it? Well, we'll see. The recent results are clear. It is three wins for Happy in a row. Xiaotian Cup, TP League and Ted Cup, where it was the grand final. All going towards Happy. It feels like sometimes it's a 50-50 thing between them. Will it be close, like it was in the TP League, or will it be a stomp? Happy has his level. He's not playing below his level. It's all down to Lin to make this an exciting series. All right, Lion is there. Okay. Well, we're ready to go. Undead, Orc. A wild ride, everybody. Happy is ready. We are ready. Lin is ready too. And we kick this off. First out of seven. Both have identical MMR on War 3 Champions. We start this. $1,500 on the line, 400 guaranteed for the players, and now $100 more for every contestant. Who boys! I'm excited! Our match starts, we got Happy on the upper right hand side, we got Lin on the bottom left hand side, Concealed Hill is the starting point. And we gotta discuss what heroes it gonna be. Is it gonna be a Blade Master? Is it gonna be a Farsia? Is it gonna be a mix of both? And what did Happy cook up? Is it still DK Mass Ghouls? Is that what we're going to witness? As I seem to have... Some spikes here. I hope this fixes itself. Thank you, Victor Ginas, for the sub as well. But there we go. It is a Fastier. Happy waiting for the Ziggurat to finish here, starting with the DK. No Ted Fiend build order or anything. Straight up ghouls again, who've been terrorizing orcs in this matchup. We've seen 1-0 play nothing but ghouls. So hopefully Lin found an answer. And the answer to this was, for the longest time, Wyvern, mass air. Look at this, Lin with the warmel here. And a fast tech. Happy sees this immediately. This is a clear sign to me that it's Wyvern, Wyvern, and even more Wyvern into some bats, and then some explosions right after. A player's forces are under. How well will the Fasia harass go? Happy knows what this is gonna be, and I think this is what he expected that it's gonna be. How much damage can you do? Happy's reaction immediately. Narrow tower in the base for better fortification. A little bit of creeping. And trying to get level 2 as fast as possible and then turn the harass around. And put the pressure onto Lin. Lin trying to creep as fast as possible. His best defense is offense. Keep Happy busy in his base. Try to delay the tech for as long as humanly possible. And try to get ghouls away. So far, not a single point of damage done. Was an interesting pathing here on Lin's side. Not going straight up to the right hand side. Maybe expecting happy at the green, but that's coming in only now. Wolves are doing a little bit of damage, but light regeneration is obviously helping against that. Last hit. Didn't get it. Happy with level two, and now things get difficult for Lin. He needs to get some HP points off of that DK. And 
I'm just waiting for me to lag, so this is finally fixing itself. Not much damage. This is maybe a skeleton, but that's about it. We will have a solution a for forces are under game attack. two. So, tier 2 tech almost done. Is this sufficient for Lin? He got a thousand gold, he can spend it in an instant. And Happy has of course no TP anymore, but it's totally fine. Like, even if he gets some damage on the DK now, it's night time. He can go to the shop, he can heal up, and Lin always has to worry about a snap surround as we've seen so many times off of Happy. But so far... No big accomplishments for Lin at all. Happy level 2.6. Inventory quite underwhelming, I gotta say. And ooh, what? Triple production. Double beastery into totem. That's new. Is it Wyvern and Spirit Link then? So they're less fragile. That's an interesting, interesting build, if it's that play, and I assume it's that play. Does it help against Bat Riders? I guess so. Tech by Lin is obviously far ahead, but Lin can't stop Happy from getting level 3, and now it's Coil territory. Smooth early game for Happy, I would say. Shadowhunter coming in, but no reinforcements. Lin can play a vast different of strategies. Raider lame, Wyvern pr pressure, maybe even some tier 3, but we decide to open things up with Raiders. Double Beastry Raider Walker. Huh. I'm not too sure how successful this is gonna be. Like, ghouls will tear the raider apart, Coil Nova will tear the raiders apart. And it seems like Happy has uh, similar issues to me. But yeah, how do we judge this early game? 0.3 levels on Lin, happy with level 3, tier 3 on the way, and apparently Lin stays on tier 2, right? Big investments into that tier 2 army. He's trying to overwhelm quickly. While happy didn't unfold his tier 3, while there is no destroyers. Things don't seem to be stabilizing for Happy right now, giving Lin some time. Maybe uh, Happy saw what's coming and has to look into his playbook. But alright, we try this again. And Happy comes in. Needs, uh, wants to prevent creeping with only the DK. But hero focus is a thing. Happy didn't buy a TP, only a potion, and snare is ready in a few seconds. No crowd control outside of Hex. Five seconds. Can he buy the time? Lich is coming in to the rescue. Oh, and the ghouls are coming in as well. Oh, Lin, that's not looking too great. Raider is getting surrounded immediately. 
And that's a big kill. A little bit too early. Imagine Ensnare is finished. Imagine he's catching him here. Without the Lich. Without the ghouls. Then it might be a dead DK. But that way, we're in a world of trouble. Happy is not... Is, is deciding to not force the issue. And rather keep on creeping. Waiting for the ghoul frenzy, waiting for the tier 3. And what's Lin's idea? It's an expansion. Triple production expansion. This is a later expansion than normal. And usually... Happy has no problem dealing with that. He clearly cooked this up prior to the match, so how does he think he can survive the early late game? A player's force Big fight in front of Happy's base. No Destros yet, wolves are kinda strong, but it's two, two heroes only. No level 2 wolves, no level 2 heal wave. How is Lin supposed to win this? He isn't. He's exchanging time. I'm sorry for the PowerPoint. Next map will be better. Lin has a supply lead, but that's about it. And Happy knows exactly what's up. Players' forces are under attack. Oh, what a razor sharp timing this is. Happy knows exactly what to do and when to do it. Bats are coming in, take care of one destroyer, the other is wet, but the ghouls are the problem. And it is a huge cancel here. Two minutes down the drain for Lin. He's connecting once again, down to 50%. But there's so many units falling. It's an even exchange, actually. Another destroyer falling. And, and the magic damage of walkers is doing a fine job. But the Destro is getting coiled full mana. The Spirit Link is, of course, feeding that Destro with HP, with mana, with damage. And then is trying his darnest to get rid of it. DK still has a potion, should be fine. He's winning the air fight on the ground. There's still ghouls. Actually, the Burrow is a big help if Lin can hold here. It's not looking that bad for the late game, even though the fast here is falling off. No item anymore, though. He'll wave to the rescue for the time being. And more and more units towards Happy's XP account! Little bit of help. I'm lagging at the worst possible timing and oh my god. All right, I'm getting on a different stream.
And I guess that game is over? Uh, we'll see about that. So, our friends are uh, taking over and I will use Flow TV to not have lags anymore. I'm very sorry for the experience, but the game was over. Happy wins map number one with that attack. Lin lost the Farseer, and that was game one. 100 bucks. And the game has started. Okay. We will have a better connection for map number two. I apologize to everyone involved for the experience, but hopefully we get six amazing maps now without any complications. Thank you, JRAS, for the big super chat. 35 New Zealand dollars, I think. Long time watcher from New Zealand. Cheers, Neil, for keeping this game alive. Love. Thank you. Also, John the Fool. Love the super chats. Welcome to YouTube, everybody. Whew. I didn't expect this to be so stressful today, but hopefully we can all forget about it once the games are rolling. Our next map is going to be Northern Isles. But okay, feels like we need a rehost, maybe a join bug. We had these in the past, didn't we? Six more maps to go. This timing by Lin. I don't quite understand it, to be honest. Triple production building into Raider Walker, then Kodo Wyvern. Thank you, Uwatch, for the sub. Happy's timing is pretty much tailor-made for it, right? Maybe if the harass works out better, then there's a chance if he delays Happy a little further. That expo was so close to finishing. If that expo finishes, well, then there's always a chance, of course, but Happy's timings are too good. But again, this game boils down to the one encounter on the right hand side. We were six seconds away from Ensnare finishing. Happy dives in with the DK. And that was exactly those six seconds. And then the Raider gets surrounded. Lin loses momentum. Can't get the potion away. I can't can't take the potion away, can't take the DK away. Thank you, Eteria, for the sub. S sub to the lags. Back to lagcraft. Yeah, yeah. So we're about to start this, waiting for Infi at the moment. Uh, 
Uh, Infi, of course, streaming that to his audience. And now we're ready. Both players ready. Go, go. And we have more in-game action. Norwegian Whale Invitational. Map number two, Northern Isles. Is there a better chance? This is Lin's first map pick. So it must be his favorite. Northern Isles did orcs uh, some favors in the past, especially versus Night Elf. And a lot comes down to shop control. You know it, only one shop. Let's take a look at the map stats, everybody. Lin on Northern Isles, two third win rate, 50% win rate versus UD, 11% versus Happy Only. LT would have been better, win rate wise. Turtle Rock would have been better. Twisted would have been better. But he decides to go for Northern Isles. And I wonder why that is. Okay, Lin, show us. And make this a series. In a series versus Happy, things can derail really quickly. We think back to one year ago Happy versus Soin on this very map. The perfect game, as we called it. Once around after the next, one headhunter after the next. But is it gonna be headhunters? I don't think so, they're too squishy. Lin wants to play everything else but headhunters. Is he gonna put trust into the Farseer and the Harass again? Or is it gonna be a blade? You can pimp the blade like crazy. Nicholas Costolani, thank you for the sub. Spikes are not, we love your work. Thank you. So no lags anymore. Sorry for that first map. Uh, pains me. But now, six awesome maps. With good conditions. Farseer it is. It's the same strat, isn't it? So far it is. Warmill Fast Tech. Shadow Cat, thank you for the sub. Happy is not switching up anything. Of course, the early game went way too fine for him. So, about this double beastery walker tech. You know, I can see this work with Wyvern. Wyvern are squishy. You help them with Spirit Link. And then they do the damage. But raiders... I'm not too sure if you need two ensnares when you have Hex. But Lin is an absolute genius. There must be a plan behind it. Maybe it just didn't work out the way. He also scouted the wrong position at the very, very first creep camp. This is not the case this time. He knows what's up. And he goes straight into the base. Happy not scared of the wolves at all. Always putting pressure on that one Acolyte, warming it up a little bit. And every XP point, now every skeleton seat. is important. What game sound is super loud? Okay, sorry about that. Last hit, battle. Ooh, that was close. Lin got something, but I don't think it's enough. Let's go, we see it again. Happy, there's no one better than him in killing these creeps. Always knows the timing. He feels it. And he's just creeping into Lin's face. Wouldn't this harass work out better with the Blade Master? Lin a bit hesitant. Going for that hero these days. Once again the big one, but against Coil. Is there even a way for Lin to secure this? He plays conservatively. Two ghouls are getting hurt. And... 
again. Happy with the last hit. Can Lin get duels? He needs two. Coil is ready at the perfect time with good mana management. And that's what you get when you don't use coils for last hit. You have them ready for the heal. I would say the Seraz was a little better, especially in buying time. But it's no crazy damage. We're playing around it again. Nope. You just don't get anything and we have the same situation as we had before. DK level 2.6, Farsia gotten barely anything done. And it's also the same build. Kovac, Skitty, thank you for the sub. Beast Oh, TC this time. Different build. But that's the level these two are operating on, eh? Every split second. Can't decide about a good or bad early game. Happy Slaughterhouse is a tad delayed, but far seer TC, dude. There's no tempo in this build at all, is there? There's not even great creeping capabilities, is there? I'm very curious what Lin's goal is here. And why the double raider timing is so important. With this two raider production, Ensnare is quite late. And again, happy with the perfect scout with the skelly. Knows exactly what's up. So you get nine supply pretty much immediately. And that's supposed to help you with that expo. But happy is here with coil level two. And that usually spells disaster for the rest of the creep camp. Worth to invest into that troll to keep the heroes low on concealed. Lin was in the end able to play with level two heroes. But that's no match for this DK. Happy is playing with illusions, buying time, and is creeping the shop in the meantime. I told you how important that shop is. This time, Happy not even forced into a potion, but this is the end snare timing. There's no storm though, so this is the only crowd control he can work with. Happy always greedy, never going for a town portal anymore these days. We have one coil, and the statue falls, and that's a huge one. No region on HP and mana for the time being. And he needs that, especially for the coils. Misses the stomp! Oh no! Big investment into mana. Was a little stressed here because, of course, went of mana stealing can take that away and fuel the DK. At least he gets a ghoul for his efforts, and the expo is coming again. This delays the destroyer timing. Is it about this one statue snipe? Then, of course, in an ideal world, would have loved to get more out of this. But statue and ghoul, alright. Sells the talisman. Probably getting an invul now. Triple rings for happy, rare to see. This is very very likely to be a lot about hero focus so having these rings is probably not the worst once again we're fight on level two very atypical timings here by Lin. definitely prepared but can he make this work chain lightning coming in why we're not coming in damage is ramping up and ghouls are disappearing destroyers aren't finished yet as he had to rebuild that one statue Fasia in trouble, holds the TP, statue going down. Okay, this looking a lot better for Lin. Trading Raiders for another statue and the Destro upgrade finishes, but he can't really morph one. This is huge.
Okay, now we're talking. This is what Lin wanted to accomplish on game one. A player's forces are under attack. Identifying statues as the weak link. And if there's no destroyers, of course, Spirit Link can work well. Expo up. No chance for Happy to push this during production. Greater mana for the TC. Watch awards for Happy, not that great. Bats are coming in. Very diverse army on Lin's side. And this... Happy wasn't ready for this. And even though there was probably more possible here on the left hand side, again, this dates back to the statue loss. Wand of the Wind, also extraordinary. The air army is ramping up. We got Kodos for the damage boost. We got the level 3 heroes up. We got the tier 2 expansion up. A way better situation for Happy than before. Uh, for Linda before. Wolves 2. Heal scrolls. No invul on either side, Lin. Still waiting for some more resources. He feels incredibly confident now. Happy is adjusting instantly. Double statues. Um, from the slaughterhouses. Oh, nice play by Lin. Not going into Coil Threshold. Happy wasting mana. And experience goes to the Korean Orc as well. The inventory for Happy is so empty. Brave move to steal this away. It was a pendant of energy. A hundred more mana is a stomp. That was such a sick timing by Lin. Oh my god. Here we go. AoE against the ghouls. He's catching four of them. Time for the Wyvern to get the damage in as well as Chain Lightning. Very conservative. No nuke against the Bad Riders. Three destroyers still up though. The Spirit Link got a carry. No coil at the moment. Dispelled. Wyvern to right to the right hand side. Not feeding all that experience. Destroyers falling quickly. Lin is absolutely overwhelming. Bats are connecting. This is one more. The Destros are falling like flies. GG. What an exclamation mark by Lin. I didn't get the strategy on game one, but seeing this, this was gorgeous. This was perfect. So many timings working out well for Lin. Beautiful. Just beautiful. He found a strategy again that works. Let's say map one was a little bit unlucky. And things didn't work out that way he wanted it to and the way he needed it to. And now we are down to five maps. Wow. We have ourselves a series, everybody. And the next one is going to determine who takes the lead here, of course.
Sorry, some admin duties here. Damn. Interesting to see. This is loser's pick. Because, of course, if you lose a map, you might want to play on a map next that comforts you a little bit so the opponent doesn't get momentum. Happy says, I don't care. Pick any map. I did not expect this. Says, what's the point in picking maps if we play all of them anyway? Curious how this is gonna go. So, if Happy wasn't uh, doesn't want to decide the maps, I want to decide the maps. And I said, Twisted Meadows, guys. Go Twisted Meadows. Because we love Twisted Meadows. Not much time between the series. Holy moly, old Korean 10 euro, thank you. Good weekend. Anti-cyclone, thank you for the sub. It is a good weekend, isn't it? Okay, he doesn't care about momentum. He says, I don't care. What a statement that is. Lin picked Northern Isles right away. So for him, he clearly has a preference. When we started the series, I was a little worried that we have a 7-0 at the end. But this is Lin, and Lin is prepared. And Lin is ready to give us a show. Now, on Twisted Meadows. Does this timing work out on bigger maps? Concealed Hill was already quite a big map, rush distance wise. It did work better on Northern Isles, which is uh, from base to base a little smaller. Twisted, one of the bigger maps, but we also have Lost Temple, we also have Turtle Rock, we also have Shattered Exile. So now, are there any adjustments? As I see Norwegian Whale in the chat, can we send a wall of hearts in the chat for him to sponsor this? For him to spend $1,500 for our entertainment? Can we see some Norwegian flags? Can we see some whales? Can we see some hearts? Drakatos did it right. There we go, everybody. This afternoon wouldn't be possible without Norwegian Whale, and I'm incredibly thankful for it. DK, Ghouls, that's the opener. On Lin's side, Fossier, Fast Tech, even faster than before. Lin has been playing a very lame style on this map. With a lot of raiders into happy space, killing the buildings. And that was also always tailored towards the slaughterhouse. First and foremost, happy started to build it far in the back to keep it possible. Uh, to keep it possible, to keep the statues possible. And this is the Achilles heel once again. Forces are under attack. Judging from game one. Whoa. What the hell? Ah, just for the... Just for the corpse. Let the Acolyte die. And Lin doesn't find him. Nice evasion creeping. Dodges the Farseer. Is that another coil? Oh, Lin got it! What a madman! Moved in as close as possible to reduce the projectile speed. And Happy was too greedy to go for the coil to secure the kill. And 
No way, dude. A player's forces are under attack. That's a ghoul down too. This is amazing. Can you get a better opening? It's hard. It's real hard. This time, Happy learned the lesson. Uses the coil to get the kill. If this is how Lin wants the early games, I can totally see it. Oh, Happy got that one. The null one, but it was close once again. Ghouls are creeping at the same time. High tempo on map three. Lots of strength, a little bit of uh, shadow melt. But this is Lin's weakest timing. He has no units. All he got a town is, is a Farseer and timings. We have the same build again that we had on Northern Isles with the TC, with Beastery, with Walkers. Oh, Lin. Playing around it. Didn't get this one, did he? Nope. More chances. Pressure on ghouls. But happy stabilizing here. This is not happening again. Not the same mistake twice. And again, happy, 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 happy. All the last hits. But it takes time. The early game once more. Happy is ending up on level 2.5, which is all right. But Lin accomplished more than in the previous games. Graveyard, tech, all waiting for it. Thank you, FEB, for the raid. TC is marching across. Double raider, walker. And then a fast double end snare and stomp. Player's forces are under attack. Taking XP away everywhere. We haven't seen a dive into the base. Lin's getting a lot of information about tech timings and building positioning. So he knows what to do. For now, positioning himself a little more defensively, creeping up. And of course, he has to free the expo. Because that's the backbone of the late game. Additional income. Thank you, I, thank you, uh, Ironic LMZ, for the five months. This really boils down to is this strategy made for bigger maps? Happy is making an adjustment immediately. Double slaughterhouse. He tried this before. As a reaction to the early statue loss, and now he even does it preemptively. The army sustain on Lin is good with the early spirit link. There's still a timing window when there's no dispel against it. And with spirit link, the entire orc army is tanky, beefy. Not much to accomplish here. Oh. Wait a minute. Everything is so hurt. Is Happy gonna lose a ghoul in his base? No way. No. No, no, no. And then Blight region. But solid map control, guys. We get the vamp aura. Not too many units benefit from it. We're gonna get mass air after this once again. Expo is up. Disenchant. Yes. Helps the raiders, but that's about it. We have a parry up online. No invo potion. No heal scroll. And I'm sure that Happy has the right read. Bats, Wyvern. And creep jack by Lin. Knows that this lap is happening. Sends half of his army here to stress with crowd control 
and the damage dealer while creeping up the TC on the right hand side knowing that Happy is in his base this should be enough time even though there isn't much damage but with the Wyvern coming in he gets it done Lin is very very well prepared Ring of the Archmagi more HP more armor more mana Reinforced defenses started. Expo two thirds. Happy struggles with creeping due to the sheer presence of Lin. But without the statues gone and with the lich like this, with four statues, three statues, and a destroyer up, can. You hold this. I guess the... Once at 50, the biggest thing Happy can acquire is armor upgrades to reduce the influence of bats. And Lin gets a big mana potion. Has a heal scroll. Expo up. Only a burrow. No tower. It's a strong timing by Happy. Supply lead for Lin. Reinforcements should be there quickly. Hard to nuke the bats out of the air with limited coil nova. Trying to hold, trying to hold this burrow. Lin needs that. Bats coming in, but only... No, 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 this one needs to detonate. There we go. The burrow is up. Production should be there. Stop again. This is so close. Oh my god! He holds for now! And Happy leaves the game! GG! Lin holds and Happy frustrated out of the game! Holy moly! This feels almost triggered. Does it not? To me, it does. Ooh. All righty, we have a series. The game started right away. Happy going springtime. Usually, Happy always tries to fight back. Always tries to level and nuke and play the game from behind until the last unit, basically. But not here. The adjustments didn't work, even with the smooth early game. I mean, smooth early game, um, he lost the creep and he lost the ghoul. That is not a smooth early game at all, but I mean, mid game. With the destroyers. That push didn't work. But <laughs> how close was that, dude? How close was that. Lin has great reads, was always stressing during the creep. And then exactly the amount of peons to repair. The storm timings were amazing to mitigate the damage of ghouls against the burrow. And Happy is against the ropes now. Two and one. Lin two maps away from winning. But of course we have four more maps to go for. Happy left hand side. Lin right hand side. <sighs> Fossier, fast tech again. Ooh, switch up by Happy, and a big one. 
Switching up the early game tech from ghouls. Into Ted Fiends. Is that the right adjustment? I can't really remember when Happy played Ted Fiends last versus schools, but this changes the entire dynamic. A player's forces are under attack. Lin will scout this rather quickly. And this, of course, also means this, like that there's not going to be ghouls, but fiends. And not having ghouls, Lin might be able to take the ground and might not be forced into air. Town is under siege. A player's forces are under attack. Harass up, level 2 prevented for now. If an acolyte falls here, the tech is delayed by minute by a yeah, minute, more or less. But that is not the case. Most important for Lin is delay the unholy aura for as long as possible. And now I'm really curious what's the adjustment of Lin? Will his radar, walker, Kodo, wyvern, bat army work as well as it did before? Or does he have to come up with something else? So far, I don't see any adjustments. It's the same as before. Very little XP on both sides. You don't have the creep speed with fiends. You gotta wait for them. Their production time is certainly longer. Harder to replace. More expensive, of course. Two peons not returning wood? A player's forces are under attack. Not sure. What? You always need to micro the peons if you build the wormhole right next to the trees. They were blocked. Ah, I see. Okay. Yeah, that hurts. He is switching it up though. Shadow Hunter second, still double beastery, but no lodge. Uh, no, no totem. Sorry, no totem, but tier three instead. So he knows he has a little bit more time for that tech to unfold. No tier two expo. And Happy still has a long way ahead of him. So, Farsia, Shadow Hunter. Is that Wyvern and Venom Spears then? I'd say so. Always with an option to go for Tiny Great Hall. But yeah, strategic variance tells me that Happy can't come up on the fly with adjustments towards the push that Lin has displayed. And yeah, classic orc play. Shadow Hunter out, get the Hex in, do some damage, force some coils, slow down the creeping. Happy can't even creep his natural here, but you gotta be careful. Wait, there's no Lich production. Only now starting. So this might not be a unit. Or is it? Force is a potion of mana. But yeah, big delays on Happy, even though it's not that noticeable just yet. What did Lin get currently? He got a, two heroes, right? There's no investment into anything else. 
And that seems very efficient to me with the Wyvern coming in. Web is far away. The levels on Lin are of course abysmal. But what he accomplished is a delayed level 3, a potion forced, uh, and no ghouls, still. And mana potions are expensive. And investments in the mid game slows everything down in the late game. We get the Wyvern, as expected, we get the Envenomed Spears. And no web just yet. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy! You go Wyvern and you find the flute and you find the scroll of the beast. Do you know how much damage that is? This is an absurd amount of extra damage. You get the plus three on every wyvern, plus 25%, which is plus 10 on every wyvern. That is crazy. Happy needs defend upgrades. Lin creeps the world. I wonder if he feels so safe. That he's going for a tiny soon. TC is coming. This is almost Lin going back to like timings of three to four months ago. Fortifying the base, the double burrow tower setup. Is too much? Over 9,000? <laughs> you guys are correct. <laughs> Definitely the highest amount of creep craft that we've seen all series. Up. TC gets another flute. There's half an orchestra here. Invo potion, heal scroll. No consumables on happy side. He's also supply block for the time being. Gut web up. Goes to the red spot. Oh, the perfectly fine by carrying this late. We go box. 2,200 viewers. Sounds good, guys. Sounds good to me. Happy got the battle bongos. That is also good damage on the fiends. Karubik with the five gifties. Thank you. But it's not nearly as good as other items on that uh, creep spot. So let's see what Lin gets. A Ancient Django, okay. A little bit unfortunate because he got that aura already on the TC. And it feels like Happy is getting ready for one big push. But where's it gonna land on? There's no expansion that is more or less fragile. Lin is willing to go this one base, one base. And I wonder if that's not too fragile. He can go up to 80. He's super rich. He spends more time and no upkeep than Happy does. And he got amazing items. Alchemist third. Okay. Acid Bomb versus Wyvern. But no silence against this TC. No sleep, no carrion swarm. And here comes the flyby onto ghouls. There's no spirit tower in the base for Happy. And forces a TP, trades it, of course, because Lin is still filthy, filthy rich. Oh, he wanted to go. Haha, <laughs> used stomp. It's on cooldown, but there was no effect because he portaled uh, during the animation. But this is what Lin wanted. He was banking 1300 gold. While Happy was in upkeep. And the TP trade is of course perfectly fine.
Can you spend the gold now? Is it time for a tiny? Not in the inventory yet. Farsia mana is very low. But happy sees, hey, everything's empty the here, huh? Are under Three claws and gloves on the lid, though. Gotta pay attention to it. TK scouting for expansions. Is that the time to go for the second base now, Lin? Or is it time to build an even bigger army? Plus 12 on the wyvern. Sick. No orb of lightning. Mana potion and heal scroll for sustain. And happy is shocking around. Double ring of return, by the way. Nice. Very tactical play now. One of them has to take a risk. Lin with an expo or happy with the push. Now, adding the armor upgrades. Might be too late. Wonky position to engage into. Codus off forward. That's the big acid bomb. Went to engage. He was waiting for that one bat. Ooh, nasty Nova. Good damage done by Happy here. Nice splits as well. Only getting one fiend with the storm. That's amazing. But what about the air fight? It's all about the air fight. And the heroes. TC down to 50%. Wyvern, lots of them web. Bats can't really connect. Going for the alchemist. Wants to take the acid bomb away. More and more bats are streaming in. Destroyers in the air. Don't really stand a chance, do they? Another bat. Boom, baby. Goes the dynamite. Lin at 62. Happy at 42. This is looking almost hopeless. The heroes got to carry that. Coil is in. Level 4 and level 2 for Happy. But the lich gets stomped. And so does Happy. Three wins in a row for Lin. So well prepared. Happy doesn't stand a chance here today! After game one! Lin in Super Saiyan mode! What is going on? What is going on? Three and one, everybody. There is maybe three players in the history of this game that are able to take three maps in a row off of Happy. And Lin is definitely one of them. I don't know if Norwegian Whale put an extra bribe onto Happy. <laughs> but goddamn. This series goes the exact opposite of what I expected this series to go. <sighs> so, playing straight up doesn't work. Going for double slaughterhouse doesn't work. Switching to fiends doesn't work. What works? Match points for Lin. We will play all seven maps. But it's match points for Lin. And this would be such a statement for all the orcs in the world. They were desperate. They were almost hopeless. I talked to Lin uh, last week or like two weeks ago. He says, man, <laughs> we need a patch. <laughs> and if Lin says that, he's not a balance whiner per se. 
Seeing this result is amazing. It didn't need a patch. It needed tinkering. Strategic variance. And god tier execution. But we all know how a series with happy can go. You get your hopes up, you get the match points, and then you get destroyed. I am very, very happy to tell you guys that one of my favorite maps of all time is making a return because I was able to do so. And this, ladies and gentlemen, it's the beauty of Shattered Exile. I hit the button, but it doesn't do the stinger transition. There we go. I adore Shattered Exile for people who are not too familiar with this map. You got two spots to expand. Left hand side, bottom side. You got labs right next to these gold mines. So we see a lot of Bombermans. We have a mercenary in the middle that gives you an assassin. Which is a pretty strong unit. So happy. Are you just giving us a show? Every map is a hundred dollars. Usually you gotta spend your entire Friday evening for just fifty dollars. Happy is not giving this money away usually. And Lynn doesn't switch things up. Farseer, Warmill, Great Hall. Tech. Happy on the other side is not satisfied at all with what the feeds accomplished in the last game. A player's force By the way, we gotta mention, it was an incredible timing for Lin to bank so much at 50, squeeze out the unit right for Happy's push, lured him into the tower position. Absolutely fantastic. So will someone make you- the rush distance is huge, by the way. So this buys happy some time. Will someone make use of that assassin? And can Lin steal XP away again? Not just yet! But this is also not level 2 from just the lab. That's all fine. Tech has started no big deal at the moment. A player's I really hope this match now with a lot of eyes on this map, on this match, can bring Shattered Exile back. Very, very underappreciated map in my opinion. And since we're moving towards more macro-oriented maps with TM and LT, maybe it's the time for maps like SE. Last hit opportunity again. Nope, this time Happy plays around it perfectly like Lynn did before on Northern Isles. But the ghoul, what about the ghoul? Neo is honestly the biggest Shattered Exile fanboy. <laughs> that might be right. Creeps are getting involved here. Things are dicey. Lin dribbles through the ghoul fangs. Well done. But also happy saving that ghoul. That is some great Warcraft we're exposed to today. Happy also has an Acolyte Spare. And Lin is moving back to the timing that we've seen before on the first three maps with triple production into TC. Granted, on the first map it was a Shadow Hunter. A player's forces are under attack. If 
you lower the HP of ghouls, of course, they can't creep too much. Don't want to risk too much. But this is the calm before yet another storm. Thank you, Osiris, for the sub. Now she's on the other foot. Lin is the one having to creep, having to force the issue. Lich a lot faster than on the previous game. Mostar, thank you for the sub as well. Love to see the Norwegian whale spam in the chat. Need to see more of that. Are under attack. Got a good feeling that this match, this show match, the investment of Norwegian Whale into this show match is bringing a lot of joy to people all across the world. So, interesting creep route. Creeping further forward with this lap and then probably slowly moving back. Fake face Chan, thank you for the sub. Dead state oil money, baby. <laughs> I guess so. With that spare acolyte, is Happy thinking about expanding? No way, right? There shouldn't be an opportunity for that. There shouldn't be a timing for that. If Lin keeps up the scouting, and he absolutely does. What the skeleton is to Happy, the wolf is to Lin. In terms of scouting. This is, of course, Lin again on tier 2. Nobody's making use of that assassin. Surprises me a bit. Got poison damage, which is great in early games. And Happy is expanding. Wow. Another different strat against the double raider timing. Here, with the rush distances being so big, the wyvern will be later. But if it's an expansion play, these raiders hold a great value. And again, I gotta say, this looks a bit desperate. Was a bit of a decoy. Lin scouted this early. This forced Lin to cross the map, this delayed timing. The expansion still had a purpose, even though it didn't come through. Wait, what? Oh, sweet creep manipulation. Makes it an easy, easy experience game. As Happy is cleaning up the mercenary camp, frenzy, destroyers, inventory. Rather empty for both of them. Crystal ball, you know, on a big map like this with two expansion spots. Maybe not the worst per se. Now it's Lin time to get a second base up. Okay, now an assassin. They have 450 HP, so on Lin's side, this was probably a bit too fragile against Coil Nova. But don't underestimate this lad. And never underestimate Coil Nova. Never underestimate Happy. Just because three games in a row went Lin's way, it doesn't mean it stays this way. Big heal potion, massive stomp. The hero levels aren't there just yet. Only level two, not even close to level three. Ghouls flooding the space, but. Stomp and Chain Lightning creates a lot of space, gets some damage done, but what about the Destroyers? The backbone of Happy's army, Lin wasn't able to delay them, Coil Nova on the Raiders takes care of Anti-Air, of course, as well, and less control in Lin's fight. But that is time for the expansion, which is not coming up, it's just the Towers. Dark Ranger now, Kodo has eaten, and the Assassin is finally freed. And this looks like the best happy game in a while. Bats are coming in. The position is getting a little better. As reinforcements are also faster. But that's a lot of skeletons. That's still some ghouls. But we do have the level 3 cow. Can you hold? Once again, the towers are up. And the Destro is hurt. Level 3 now here as well. Two towers. 
One goes down, but the second one will probably be up again. Playing a little tower whack-a-mole. Um, okay, lots of coils. And the spirit link is again fueling the Destro. But one bat can lead to a kill here if not coiled. Great save by Lin. Very low supply fight here. And Happy can't do anything. It looks like, wow, that range on the coil. <laughs> okay. A player's forces are under attack. Very atypical. Very, very atypical for a happy game that fights like these. Go clearly the opposite way for him. Great execution by Lin. I don't want to take anything away. He lured Happy into the tower. Once again, he had the repair ready. But is this the best Happy we've ever seen? Definitely not. No expo behind this. On either side, just yet. But a fortified position for Lin. The levels are there now. 3-3. Three, three. The bats are online. The Kodos are there. And Snare is online again. A player's forces are under attack. So what now, I ask? Lin is waiting for gold. He's at 51 out of 51. Little unfortunate. Losing a lot of gold here now. And Shadow Exile is, of course, one of the bigger maps that we can have in one-on-one. -on -one. Big red spot, happy in punching distance. The big one goes down. TC gets the belt, more tankiness here. And the speed scroll to disengage, good timing. Leave the scraps to happy, that's perfectly fine. Happy, by the way, very, very, very little lumber. No upgrades. That expo seems a bit doomed. Moisan, thank you for the 35 month reads up. And Lin is not in position. This is a cancel. Is there anything that Lin can do with the time? Happy has a TP once again. There was big cost. Feels like a wrong read. Scouting for an expo. But Lin, these labs close to expo can be used for some Bomberman gameplay. Where are we ending up on? Probably the Tomb of Relics. Oh, no detonate yet. This is getting problematic. Blows up the shop, so at least he has that. The bats are connecting. Everything was clumped up. This one will probably fall, despite the Spirit Link. Happy in his own base. Lin, is this, is this the right call, buddy? He has a TP. He can get at all times, really. Both at 40 now, but the Destro's amazing damage. Kodo nuke, Lin, you're overstaying your welcome, mate. And he knows it. Weird game. Very weird game, to be honest. This probably shows that neither of the player was too familiar with Shattered Exile. Expo delayed, lots of gold lost to upkeep unnecessarily. Farseer died there too. But okay, Happy is fighting. Happy got as he. That was also his pick, of course. He had three map picks in a row. And now two more maps. Is it yet another turnaround? Is it the same story as so many times before? We had Turtle Rock and Lost Temple left in the pool. Yeah, I think the map size didn't necessarily play into Lin's strat. 
This is a very timing dependent thing. And if the map is big, rush distance increases, reinforcement time increases, and it didn't do Lin too many favors, I'd say. Big investment into the towers that helped him survive the first fight, but afterwards, a little bit of a wrong read, maybe thinking that Happy expanding again, crossing the map, exposing that expo. If he's in position, left-hand side, he might be able to hold again in the, the shadow of the two towers. But he wasn't. And that gives, of course, Lin two more match points. We are moving up to Turtle Rock. And that leaves the big Lost Temple last. Every map... Oh, wait. Every map, $100 on top of $400 that everybody gets just for showing up and agreeing to the match and the conditions, of course. Turtle Rock. We look at the map stats once again for Lin. This definitely includes the old Turtle Rock. But it's 85% win rate on Turtle Rock versus Happy. That's quite a lot, guys. So, second match point for Lin. Can he close it out? Another $100 and the win for the entire horde. Or is it yet another happy comeback? Norwegian Will, what a hero. I agree. Okay, Turtle Rock, show us what you got. They're spawning on the same lane. This, of course, is the Watch Awards and Heal Awards removed. Rush distance. The map might look big, and the map in itself is rather big with lots to creep. But if you're spawning on the same lane, this is little rush distance. Same build again. No Blade Masters this entire series just yet. Norwegian Well, thank you for the tournament. Right on. One of the bigger Lin fanboys that we got in the scene. That's for sure. The, the Fiend experiment failed so spectacularly that I don't think we'll see it back. Ghouls it is. We stick with DK and Farseer with the fast. A player's forces are under 3,000 viewers. Mm -hmm. Can they just fight forever? Can we just dump another 1,500 to have them fight for two more hours? We haven't seen the craziest late games yet. It was all very timing dependent. If the timing works out, Happy wins. If the timing doesn't work out, Lin wins. Two more, everybody. Two more. Lin is switching it up. He was creeping first, usually he immediately went across, preventing Happy's levels. Our player's forces are under attack. And they neutralized each other quite a bit. Everything saved, ghoul to the side, wolf also. And this is not many ghouls on Lumber at all. They're all on the map. So, this is level 2 of Happy can't steal anything. So we deal with the ghouls first. As Happy is creeping here, and that is then Unholy Aura. 
This is big. This would also be an early chain lightning if Lin gets the entire camp. But this is a good distraction. If no wolves fall, but the shadow mal that he found on the first camp definitely helps here. Trying to commit. And he got it. So if he gets that little turtle now, that is level two. Happy is coming in. No loss in the early game. And Lin knows this. Retreating without getting the turtle. So win for Happy. Well done. Nicely playing around each other. Ooh, we're getting closer to a coil a kill threshold, but attack. no. Double beast to rewalk up is again the play. No mass wyvern, no mass raider, no big adjustments here. Forcing coils, slowing happy down. Similar to what we've seen before. Of course, as an undead, you can't catch up with the tech of orc. It's just always faster. Because the fast year covers so much ground. A player's forces are under attack. And Happy knows that it's a TC, doesn't have to be afraid of a Shadowhunter rush. But rather more Creepcraft, taking things slow. And of course you don't want this DK to get level 3 fast, so we're contesting this again. And it's down to Happy to find a solution. It's always Slaughterhouse into Tech into Lich, right? No big adjustments in that regard. And it's all down to execution. I think the game plan for both is clearly laid out. No surprises, no more. <laughs> Will a ghoul fall? Will Lin be able to get one of these? No, just no. Chain lightning is available. And this is quite a reduction. Happy down to 29. Struggling to get level 3. And the TC with the classic orc creep spot to the red as fast as possible. That TC might need some tanky items. Definitely something to be found here. Ring of the Arch Magi again. Love it. And snare up. Attack. Raiders online. But not even level 2 TC yet. And it's kind of hard to get it here. Zeta, thank you for buying a hoodie. Hope it keeps you warm in winter, mate. I enjoy your content. Thank you, Zeta. Shop for Happy, this doesn't have a Watch Award anymore, but the Crystal Ball scans the rat spot, seeing that Lin is scouting this, uh, is, is creeping this. But this Crystal Ball wears off quite fast, and he didn't see the Peon. So will this mislead happen? He might be surprised, actually, that this takes so long. But he pulls back. Waiting for Frenzy. We don't have reinforced defenses. Not even started. And we don't have a tower. This timing... ...can be very disruptive. One of the more tamer games that we've seen today, huh? Here we go. Inwill Potion Heal Scroll on Happy. 35 food only. But now we got Frenzy. Now we got Destroyers in a bit. And no damage was done early. And we're fighting far away from Lin's base as he's buying time for the Great Hall. 25%. More stalling. 
Strategic play by Lin, not the flashy one. And this is Happy's timing and everybody knows. No speed scroll to escape? The bats are in position, so is the wyvern. The end snare makes it so that the bats can't connect, right? But of course they're buying time. <sighs> Undefended position, but air units... Oh, intercepted here! Was about to say it can safely fly across and reunite with the army. So... If Lin were a ground unit, that would be a problem. He sends the bats all the way back to the base. They're missing in the fight now. Going for the Dark Ranger, being healed here, waiting for the burrow. But there's only one peon here. Stressful situation for Lin. This is, of course, the fight to win the show match. Destro detonated at least one of them. But the supply is still even happy. Brute forcing that base. We're down to very, very little HP. And he gets it. The big win condition is not online just yet. Happy for the first time in a while breaking that base. Unlike in game two, three, four, where this isn't possible. Sweet and snare dodge with the Destro Morph. Happy is online, finally woke up. And where are the bats he needs them? Happy not without losses though. The ground is empty, it's all Destros. And heroes, of course. Ooh, Lin, can you win without the Great Hall? Happy unwilling to fight into that fortified position with the Boron Nubets are streaming in. But everything is more or less healthy. And now it's time to rebuild. Reinforcements sent to the side, not walking into the Horde's army. And Happy is getting stronger in these fights, guys. A little bit too careful by sending the bats so far away if they connect earlier. Maybe you can force a faster retreat and get that expo up. Oh, bats! Instantly nuke. That's the risk. Some rally points seem a bit off, but while Happy is creeping, Lin's attacking. There is a destroyer. These raiders are hurt. There's no speed scroll. He wants this narrow tower. He wants the acolytes. He wants to keep Happy back and buy more time on the cost of a TP. This would have also kept Happy supply blocked at 40 and opened up a huge timing window. But Lin is starting to make mistakes and can't get the objectives that he wants to. TC close to three. Another attempt. Ooh, Happy is getting strong. Real strong. And he's also getting the shop as Lin wants some turtle soup. The diesel engine that is happy is online. Level 3 TC heal potion might need it if the Nova lands, but it doesn't. Good retreat with the speed scroll as one should. And happy is busy here. And this expo is growing. Maybe there is a second chance to build this expansion. But happy. Usually he won't allow this. Still no defense upgrades, but no wyvern in this fight. Only bats. He needs them. And that's three destroyers. Guys, I got a feeling that game seven will decide the series. Again, a perfect timing. This is so good. And the damage is too high. You gotta cancel this again. Lin needs a magnificent fight to stand a chance here. Happy 400 gold. Takes care of the burrow. Lin unwilling to engage. No static defense as a support anymore. And the connections just aren't there yet. More skeletons on the ground thanks to these peons. They're not helping. They're kind of backstabbing. Happy splits are great. Loses two Destros. The third one is getting saved. Okay. Lin, it looks hopeless. But you're a god amongst orcs, so maybe you can do it. But how? Against this tri-hero combo. 
The lack of statues and the instant reinforcements might give him hope. Another death show. We got level 4, but also level 3 Lich. That's huge. No control in this fight anymore. Lack of ant snare. Farsi on the menu. No consumable in his inventory. Could swap the greater healing around. As Happy is running out of mana. He wants the DR. And he might get this DR if not for the invul potion. We're playing Hero Arena. And in Hero Arena, without tier 3, that's a problematic situation for an orc. Chain Lightning lining up! Not enough damage! Happy calculated this perfectly! Dark Ranger lives! Farseer down! Game 7, baby! Whew. Lost Temple to the side at all! The passive approach by Lin didn't necessarily work. Happy contesting the bottom left hand turtle spot was so good. The four ghoul pulled to the left hand side, buying time for the DK in the north to get the level two, moving back with Unholy Aura that was then unlocked at the perfect timing, not allowing the Farsia to get uh, chain lightning to threaten the ghouls and then happy in the driving seat playing his tempo the denying expansions once again with the perfect timing and that makes it a 3-3 three, three, best of 7 thank god I don't have to explain why we play the 7th map but you know this is more than just a hundred dollars Thank you, Kevin, for the sub. We're down to a best of one. This is your four-year anniversary, by the way. Thank you. And what a better map to decide this on than Lost Temple. What's this gonna be? We've seen DK Farseer all day, every day. Is it time? For Blade Master vs. Crypt Lord, maybe. Please, give me a 40 minute epic banger to decide the Norwegian Whale show match. It's already great that we go full distance. It's already great that we see new strategies, new timings. But Linda feeding happy in a best of seven. That would be an epic statement. Also to show the competitiveness and the state of the horde currently in Warcraft 3. The number one in the world against the number two in the world. We're only one map away from deciding this series. Who takes the big one? Is it Happy? Is it Lin? We got close positions. Would have loved to see this cross, but no. Who is this even better for? Lin can certainly expand here or here, as he's not going for a fast expansion. And the rush distance is quite good. There we go, guys. One last dance in the Norwegian Whale Show match. Are there adjustments? Fasia. Seven maps, Farsia. No blade, no crit. And Happy switches it up. Dreadlord, baby. The sleep, the swarm. And the vamp aura. I was wondering, is that just an LT special versus human? Or is it the standard on Lost Temple?
Happy is giving the people what they want. Incredible series. A big exclamation mark by Happy on map one, destroying Lin's strategy. And then three wins in a row by Lin, which is incredibly hard to achieve against Happy, obviously. Showing that the strategy that he wanted to go for is working. And then the back-to-back -back wins by Happy, defending two match points in a row. Now, Dreadlord gameplay on Lost Temple. Lin again with a similar strategy to Turtle Rock, creeping first. And Happy, Dreadlord, fast expansion. Both with the ring first. Sleep, of course. Huh, this creep doesn't wake up, huh? During daytime. Peaceful, peaceful nulls. Very different objectives here. A player's Cleaning the temple is Lin's job. Erecting an expo is Happy's job. Lin didn't scout. You're right. He did not. He's probably anticipating this. But can you always be sure? Did he even scout the spawning position? It feels like he did not. He f feels a little clueless. No, no, no. Sleep. Surround. No shadow melts. The creeps wake up. All right. This is damage towards happy big time. But the town portal is gone. One sleep. On a huge map taking that expo away. A player's force Big win for back. Happy. But we stick with the beast trees. We stick with the totem. Happy's anti-air takes several minutes to come online. Outside of carrion square. The trolls are gone, leaving the ogre mauler, very tanky, Happy's expo about to be up. Attack. Lin has to be so careful now. Once around and he's dead. This feels inefficient. No steel, but at least vision, intelligence. Fasia just running around though. No level three dreadlord. Relatively hard to get here as everything is so far away. Lin is opening up his own expansion with another claw, which is great response. But Happy's Expo is up, getting heavily, heavily fortified. The tech is running. It's definitely a timing thing. Peon can expand at any time now once he has the resources, but since it's so timing dependent... Ooh, double crypt. Since it's so timing dependent, can't afford that now. Seppi going Garks against this, by the way. With the echo advantage? He can't afford it, can he not? Ooh, I can definitely see, definitely see, a, see a Telly Staff, Boots of Speed. On the Dreadlord at level 3. And a Mana Stone! Ooh, the Dreadlord is uh, not the best in regening, regenerating mana, but now he absolutely is. Lin gets the temple as Happy is moving to the left-hand side. Gives the middle of the map away to the Orc. 
Happy scouting, perfect time. As the peon is ready. A little with a defensive approach, not a timing approach. Scroll of the Beast, as well as Ankh. Not the worst, not the best. Map is still big. We want more airtime, everybody. Happy with Cannibalize! Look at this! Level 4. We all want an Infernal, don't we? But for that... A lot of units still have to die. Farseer scouting, knowing what Happy is doing. And there wasn't too much cannibalize. Oh, got an arm. Cappy checks this. Reinforcements coming in. It is very different, by the way. No wyvern. Only raiders walkers. Here comes the surround. But there's an arm. Just no TP. He's oh, the chain lightning gets a double kill. Lin has the gold. Buys a heal scroll. No TP. Was that out of stock because Happy got it before? Fiend transition, no ghouls. Oh, it's two towers, man. That's so hard to crack. But with shockwave, no storm. This might be echo damage, but how to get out? No speed scroll. No TP. Dangerous, dangerous territory for Lin here now. How to get out? There's also sleep. The DK comes in. The Farseer is surrounded. Happy. Are you winning three maps in a row versus Lin? Really? Shockwave one more time. Not hitting much. Definitely a better position now. The heal scroll. He's waiting for it. The perfect synergy between Spirit Link and heal scroll displayed once again. Shockwave. He wants more. But there's no mana no more. One more shockwave maybe. But also the carrion swarm. Huge AoE damage on both sides. What's next? Sleep on the TC. Brute force. He needs the kills. Lin is investing so much into this, but happy also. What's left, really? The heroes. The heroes, that's it. Raider, Walker, safe to the side. Amazing micro by Lin. Both have this expo up. Happy. Struggling. But we're one hero kill away from a tide turning. And that is one coil away as well. Fiends are dying rapidly against the wolves on level 2. And the TC can probably just walk away. There's no one. Holy Aura. Farseer is back. Counter blocked by Lin. Anticipating a surround by Happy. And damage is done. Supply lead is gigantic. And the economy is evened out. Players' forces are under attack. This is now, of course, absolutely amazing to have the health fountain in the middle of the map. Happy is switching back to ghouls. He definitely anticipated Wyvern, no? I'm so sure. And that's why he went for the fiends. But that ain't happening. Counter push. Boro isn't up. Close. Needs repair. Now. Oh my god, the carrion swamp dodge. Lin, are you insane? Doesn't really help though. It was a flashy play. We're going for the statues once again. And Happy has a TP on the Dreadlord. Wants to gobble up more XP from peons. Reduce the economy. Reduce the gold income. Farsia level 4. Chain Lightning, of course, an insane weapon for schools. And the 
dust settles. Four production buildings for Happy. For the first time this series, we have a two base, two base situation. And Lin, he feels he has the time. Tier three. Kalito, thank you for the sub. W Lieber, thank you for the sub. A player's forces are under attack. 3,500 viewers, by the way. Great. <gasps> Archmage Aura for the TC at the Farsia. Imagine this unhappy side. This was also the fight, by the way. The bottom left hand fight. Mana Stone go. Lin needs more time for tier 3, and then what do you do with the tier 3? He's scouting. With the bat, I like that a lot. Using the synergy of Spirit Link and Heal Fountain constantly. No third hero for Happy, by the way. Still room for an Alchemist. Still room for a Lich. Lich is coming. The DK, by the way, level one. Then probably doesn't didn't expect Happy to be home. Shockwave, chain lightning, not on the level yet, but long term, Happy might need heal scrolls. This AOE is sick. Four four against four one one, no TP, lots of control. Raiders to the side. As you don't want to fight without a heal scroll on Lin's side either. But he has the resources, just needs the time. This map, of course, huge. Making it to the shop, not guaranteed. Happy has the ad advantage of having heal scrolls at home. And it's not the meme at home, it's like the real thing at home. Bats, tier 3 done. Ulrock, thank you for the sub. I love this and I want it to last forever. Me too, brother, me too. Players forces are under attack. On paper it's just a hundred dollars, in reality it's so much more. Easy creep on the right hand side, making strides towards level 5 and opening up the shop. This is even more important, got the wind of the wind which is fantastic of course. The disable against coil, sleep, everything. Oh, Lin also with the town portal, 76 food. We're getting there, the big late game fights. The inventory for Lin is looking amazing. All you do is hold. No reinforced defenses might bite him. This requires a reaction by Lin pretty much instantly. Destroyer push is sick. And here comes the TP. Carry and swarm off cooldown. Will hit a lot. This is the fight, everybody. So many destroyers, but no armor upgrades. The bats can connect. Lots of skeletons being dispelled. Who wins the AoE war? One heal scroll used already. Happy has a TP, but also a mana potion. Raider's not really used to fight. He needs the bats. Lin, where's the production? Bats are coming in. That's another one gone. Three Destros still. Now Wyvern are sick with Venom Spears. Shockwave duels gone. Level five. Close neck and neck fight here. One more coil. Very, very low though. Lich on the menu. Oh, not anymore. It's gone. Healing is not available for Lin no more. DK on the menu. Oh, that TP. So sick. Also, the dispel speed. Carry and swarm last second to get another one. Even supply. Happy with a better economy. Sick fight. Sick fight. Both lost a lot. 5-5 five, five on Lin, though. Lich kill, big because he can't level. But is this about creeping anymore? Or is this just turning into a bare knuckle box fight? Are under Peons need to slide over, happy's aware. More economy damage needs to be done. And that was a fight with two heal scrolls. Next fight will be with zero. 
Knusper Hoden, 350 Euro donation. Thank you very much. Go, Lin! And Happy is giving Lin some time. But it's also getting the red spot. That's level 5. That might be level 3. We have a Wyvern transition. A big one. With Envenom Spears. Makes sense. Not only were the Wyvern upgraded, but also the Kodos. Lim needs more than anything else heal scrolls. This is 5 3 2. Huge upgrades. Scout. What is it? Scepter of Avarice. This is Transmute. This is big on a Kodo. This is also a Finger of Death. A player's forces are under attack. Lin has a heal scroll. No TP, no speed scroll. Oh, very little mana on the DK. Happy has to decide. Brawl or get out. No third base. With shockwave. TC is rather useless in fights. It's nice to hit the statues. But that's about it. There we go. Kaching, baby. But the Kodo Aura is still there. Lin's goal here, snipe the statue, get rid of the regen. Is this just one coil for the entire fight? It's zero coils for the fight. Supply even, heal scroll, mana potion. Happy's kind of stuck there going, ah, Zeppelin. How does this game go now? 20 minute mark. More Wyvern. Happy has the advantage that he can upgrade armor and that makes bats really, really, really weak over time. The Carrion Swarm is a weapon of mass destruction against Lin's army. It doesn't matter what he builds. It's all getting killed. Player's forces are under attack. And this is stomp now. This will come as a surprise. There's no indicator for Happy that this is not Shockwave anymore. A huge stun can lead to a lot of destruction. But speaking of a lot of destruction, this is an absurd amount of destroyers. How do you hold this? I don't think you do. Happy is well equipped. Heal scroll, heal potion, double mana, TP. All the damage thrown onto the burrows. Lin is supply blocked. Can't rebuild during the fight. Oh, Happy. This is looking so good for you now. 85 food. Lin can't counter. Massive surgical strike. Lin wasn't ready for this. But the destroyers without mana are use uh, not useless, but really weak. The nuke is sick, the crowd control as well. What to do with the bats? AoE is maddening. Now he knows that it's stopped. Can he get rid of these Destros? Not if he can't rebuild. The loss of Boros hurts him so bad. How do you deal? How do you kill the destroyers? You don't. Lin is losing so much. The Lich goes down, but does it even matter? The strategic genius of Happy striking again. He was three levels down on even economy. Imagine this fight with bad reinforcements. 
This is easily 20 supply destroyers falling. Easily. A player's forces are under attack. And now Lin is down the dumpster. Tiny great hole. There's no real ability to destroy the base. It has to be via heroes. There is a TP. There's mana. This looks hopeless. Lin throwing the kitchen sink onto that dreadlord trying to prevent infernal. But there's another coil and Lin is routing out of ammo. Uh oh, not good. We have another mana potion. This can be chain lightning at any time, but is that enough? It's a good AoE, but it's a bad nuke. The Kodo is falling, and it's all Ogre! Happy defeating three match points in a row wins the Norwegian Whale Show Match. What a series! What a turnaround! What a game! This was everything we wanted. From a competitor's standpoint. Amazing. That's how you do a show match, everybody. Coming in prepared. With new strats. With adaptations throughout the best of seven. With a dreadlord. But in the end. Happy always owns you. That was such a sick destroyer push. It's incredible how how much better Happy played at the end of the series than in the beginning of the series. He turned it up by a hundred. And then, you know, these macro maps. You really see that he knows what to do at every single point of the game. And the bigger maps, they didn't do Lin any favors, really. His triple tier two production building push didn't necessarily work. On bigger maps like Shattered Exile and Lost Temple. But it's a strategy that might work on more normal maps. Hell of a game. Hell of a commitment. And a hell of a celebration for Warcraft. Thank you so much. Woo! That was an amazing match. Maybe for the majority with the unwanted outcome. But if you appreciate greatness, you just saw two players bringing you greatness. And speaking of greatness, thank you Norwegian Whale for two hours of entertainment. For a lot of money that you invested into this. Happy, the better stamina, the better endurance, and the better adjustments. On that last map, not everything was perfect on Lin, but it's so hard to do everything perfect on a 22 minute map on uh, one of the biggest maps that we got. Once again, I want to see a, a wall of whales, Norwegian flags and hearts in the chat for Norwegian whale. $1,500 for our entertainment. And it was an absolute banger. Absolute banger. So. You think we're done here? You think we're done here, by the way? You think that's it for competitive Warcraft for a Saturday afternoon? 
What? Oh, Flodu got banned for spamming. You think we're done? We're hell no, we're not done here. We have some tournaments to cast, everybody. And that is China versus Korea versus Europe. And today, the match is uh, Korea versus Europe. And this is the first time for me casting this. <laughs> I just got some text from uh, the Chinese streamers who are super appreciative. Oh. Oh, there we go. Zabi C. Noble didn't mean it that way. <laughs> I think he did. Yeah, exactly. Oh, this is really cool. Yeah, my, my WeChat is blowing up a little bit right now. It's awesome. I didn't do much. It was all Norwegian whale. And also, shout out to Ted. I had uh, connectivity issues again um, to the Chinese server. And Ted stepped up and said, Yo, dude, let me do it. You watch Flow TV. It's all good. I gotcha. Uh, so, sh like, Ted, real bro. Randy Watson, thank you for the sub. So, um, yeah, as I said, I didn't cast uh, this China-Europe uh, competition yet. Um, so... Thank you for some amazing games. There we go. Um, I might need a delay on stream. Oh, no, I don't. Okay. Are the games on Flow TV, which is kind of what I need? <laughs> Wait, is it China versus Korea today? Because I see Remind versus 120. That might be it then. <clears throat> I gotta refill my coffee, set up the match, set up the broadcast, and then it uh, looks like nice. Uh, I won't join OB. I use Flow TV. There we go. Okay. A uh, <laughs> little bit of a break, as I said. Uh, and then we kick things off with 120 versus Remind in China versus Korea.
Nothing on a lucky man Well, I'm gonna take a Saturday night. Oh, Saturday night. New shirt, new shoes, no room for oversight. Well, I'll be cooler than James Dean, and she'll be hotter than Marilyn. When there's electric in the air, you better be prepared. She's my kind of woman. I need her so. Sorry for the little delay, everybody. We are here with China versus Korea versus Europe. It is China versus Korea here today. And apparently, there have been some additions to the lineup. Especially the lineup for China. We got Fly and 120 in the mix. Who would have thought? Okay. Adding a lot of strength. To the competition. I don't see any adjustments here. Today though, then Lin, Moon, Sock, Lucy, Remind versus 40, Isorg, Colorful, Ted, Shao Kai, Fly, and 120. And we're opening up things 
where we are a little late because of the Norwegian whale show match between Happy and Lynn with Remind versus 1 to 0. This system, once again, four players in the competition playing a King of the Hill style NGL system. So the winner stays on, the loser will be replaced by another teammate who then has match points. So we got a tanky demon hunter here on Northern Isles and we might be perfectly in time for the nine minute ghoul push. Remind invited to this as an old friend of Sky who's sponsoring all of this with $18,300. And let's see if Remind can hold this. Looks grim! But with a Demon Hunter on level 3, you never know. We don't see any bears. Tier 3 only done now. That push hits hard. 1 to 0, still a fan of the 9 minute push. Aiming for the Naga now. Been safe. Demon Hunter is dead. And I think we are perfectly in time for the end of this game. Arguably. Remind the sacrificial lamb. He's he's ready to do some upsets, upset wins every now and then, but mostly not a pro or semi-pro player every now and then. Good for Remind. He doesn't need much practice to be on a good level. But the fourth of one two zero, who was shaky recently, is a bit too much for him as it seems. And that is over. 1 to 0 wins. Game number one, taking the 1 0 lead for China. And Remind, as I said, oftentimes seated as the first place. Because now, whoever comes on next will have um, map choice. Oh, I see how it is. I see how it is. You can select your squad per week. So for example, uh, Korea rotated Lucy out for Remind. And now uh, some ad adjustments for China there. Uh, what's the standing currently? South Korea 4-0. and oh. Might be their first loss then today. Europe second place with 2-3. and three. They got all killed by Colorful, by the way two days ago. And China, that might be the reason for the adjustments to the lineup. Only one and four. That is not up to the standard. And yeah, a little, little uh, strengthening of the Korean squad might have been necessary to even things out. Interesting though, how this works. So, We'll see who's coming up next. Team Korea can, of course, decide this now. Uh, let's do China versus Korea. This means we have uh, seven maps left, uh, six maps left, best case. So, who are you throwing in to one to zero's legs? Uh, you know what I mean, like a stick to get him to. Jeez, oh, for you, for you, I should cast. Uh, the lineup is Lin Moon Sock. Those three are remaining. Sock would be amazing. Lin has a solid shot, but yeah, I think. Uh, do you need Sock later? Not really, right? Sock is the weapon. Sock is the weapon against undead. 
He got rid of Happy multiple times on Terranus stand. And you know what? That's exactly what we get. Sock versus 1 to 0 on Terranus stand. Nice. Making some adjustments here. There we go. Oh, bothers me that there's no space. There we go. Yeah, Sock's been incredible. Like, with Mountain King first, on Terranus stand, Fast Expo. Just a force. And in 90 seconds, we're getting there. Ich bin Andrew says just finished my first work of Leon versus Soen Infi comment version uploading now. Are you at a, are you doing Chinese translations to pro games? That'd be quite sick. Yeah, I think uh, Lin is probably a little worn out from the series versus Happy, so give him a break. Uh, Moon versus Undead always questionable. You kind of want him versus Orc later, I guess. Also versus Human. Should both be stronger. So seeing Sock now makes a lot of sense. Later tonight, by the way, at 8 p.m., there is a nice little thing called Jim King of the Hill. If you want to play yourself, our good friend Baron TV is hosting that. You can just sign up um, and play. And if you win, you stay on. There's three different brackets, uh, the lower tier, the mid tier, the high tier for all MMR ranges. And it's always a lot of fun. So at 8 p.m., Baron TV. Yeah, that's awesome, Andrew. Shout out, that's a lot of work. And our game is ready. Dude, human versus undead, such a beautiful matchup. Love it. And our game starting. Ah, especially on this map. This is so unique. You never see it because it's always banned. But here, King of the Hill style, you can't ban any maps. One to zero, left hand side. Took the win over Remind, that was to be expected, but now that's the real task. And can we get some Mountain King gameplay, please? That would be grand. Sock bottom right hand side trying to equalize for Korea. It's uh, in this match first to four. 25% of the way done for China. But the odds are stacked against 1 to 0. Who is probably their second best player at the moment. I would rank Fortitude higher than him at the moment. That could change next week. We all know that 1 to 0's performances are a bit shaky. And all right. Mountain King versus Lich. No Dreadlord, no Crypt Lord. Just the meta. Meta is Lich. Lich is meta.
in your experience, which race wins the most tournaments? Well, it doesn't need my experience, you can just look it up, but uh, I would say the best player wins the most tournaments and that's happy and he plays on that. But I think uh, player skill wins tournaments, not race, even though some other people might tell you otherwise. So, Mountain King got the Shadow Priest for some heal, that's nice. Oh, heavy ghoul pressure early. A little bit of extra XP thanks to the Acolyte. And the Lich, arriving so much later, can prevent the big Renegade Wizard to go down though. At least the rest of the army is not getting caught. 1 to 0, not investing his mana for the Renegade, but might now, with Nova cooldown being very, very short, and skeletons for the normal damage, which is amplified by the Renegade. A player's forces are under attack. And that's the big consumable. That's a win in my book for 1 to 0. Expo prevented, big XP prevented, couldn't prevent level 2, but oh, that's the big mana. That would have been GG. But now it is not. Two mercs for Sock. But no... Expo, not even the creep. This is... This is a great opening for 1-0, to zero, to be honest. Ghouls are ready to pounce on Militia. And another Merc. Suck seems almost attack. desperate. Ooh, this is not supposed to happen. Sock, wake up! What's the transmute staff actually called again? Staff of Avarice. We this has to work. And this has to work fast. The dispels are nice. The piercing damage will be nice. And the Nova's ending up on the Mountain King, not on the creeps for now. Good to position the trolls here to cover the retreat and trying to get some ghouls, but the Mountain King only saved by the shadows. Oh, Scepter of Avarice. Yeah, not Staff of Avarice. Scepter. Lich getting level 2, new militia. Sok has enough lumber. Hiding again. Dude, a kingdom for a dust. There's so much mana left. Do you want to pop the potion now that you have Dark Ritual? Oh, you do! You definitely do, but you don't get the kill. 105 HP is the threshold. And we're getting there! Level 3 helps. Talisman kinda helps. But what a sick game by 1 to 0 this is! Now the mana is gone. Sock survives. The ghoul ambush, no way! From downtown! The lich got too greedy! Greed has poisoned undead souls! And now we got a game! Just like that! Snap of a finger, blink of an eye! And since Sock has so much lumber... This is doable again. The problem is 1 to 0's tier 3 tech has already started. Mountain King gotta buy so much time.
That also blocks the altar for the DK. More time bought. Big power build. Tower is coming, but he needs more towers. He needs attack, he needs more towers. At the moment though, 1 to 0 is benched. He can't really creep. But he still gets the tech. A player's forces are under attack. But at least there's a chance. Without that lich kill, I don't think there's a chance. Foods ring. Players forces are under attack. <laughs> Destroyer timing in a minute, boys. Sock gets the shredder. Which he kinda needs. Takes experience away from 1 to 0 side, who doesn't have Lich level 3. Takes the sweet time. Zero decides not to expand. 60 food push. Still got the big consumable. Sock has to hang on. at nine minutes and a zeppelin drop okay that's a way to buy time but one to zero was clearly ready for it lit in position spirit tower up but that was a lot of damage that got him some acolytes and the shredder is working now What about the towers? Mountain King says hello. He's level 4 with good mana. Can't be surrounded though. He has no way to get out. And this is clearly what 120 wants to accomplish. He has no clap. It's just Stormbolt. But he can just take it one by one. Berserker's getting surrounded. Big win. That's level 3. Lich was walking through the arcane though. New mercs coming in. Towers are up. Socks timing is getting better and better here. Zeppelin is helping to a degree. Mountain King is on tier 2, can go mana potions. He has a myriad of gold. Weather goes for the clarity. Would love to see a mana potion. There we go. And 1 to 0 has to go for plan B. He doesn't have the forces. Wow, that acolyte push. That bullied him hard. A player's forces are and as bad as the early game was for Sock. As good was the late game. How do you get the funding for Mass Destroyers? Paladin coming out, more nuke and more healing at the same time. We're going Mass Air as there's only the Lich and the Destroyer to deal with it. But Sock decided to stay on tier 2. He was a little strapped for Lumba after all the towers.
There's no counter expansion. Oh, There's no counter expansion. It was just an accolade to get back to five. And... Yeah, I... I'm not sure, guys. Like, clock is ticking in favor of Sock. Staying at 50 food pretty much the entire time. Very, very efficient economically. But yeah, it is only tier 2. Now the tier 3 has started, as he has the resources. Ghouls are a no factor. Like one bolt, the dead. A player's forces are under attack. So now we'll see mass air fight. Dragon hawks reinforced by holy light, but only for the time being. Without a pit lord, it's gonna be tough to fight in these towers. Sucks fine with this. What's really threatening him? As long as the pally has some mana, that's all right. But that's a bad block. Ooh. What is it? Could nuke the pally. Decides not to. Rather go for economy. And the. One feed was falling, Mountain King still has bolts, that's another one asking for a coil to be saved. And there's still a mana potion, needs a holy light soon though. Lots of militia thrown into the mix, can't afford it, can't afford to lose more dragon hawks though. As we have 3-3 three, three heroes. Nice tuck of war. It's only two aviaries though, so the production isn't as great as it's supposed to be. Mountain King 5 though, and these Storm Bolts are just a weapon of mass destruction. You throw one after the next, do a little strap for mana currently. But as long as there's a shop and as long as you have a little bit of time... This is okay. Fiends get- this is definitely a problematic situation now, like... Ghouls are one shot, fiends... A two shot basically. And Sock is holding on, but that was that was the strongest push by one to zero possible. He wants the blood mages out and positioned defensively, like what's the answer? Love the death animation of Hawks, by the way. It's so good. Knight's coming. Blood Mage up in a sec. More Dragon Hawk. Oh, Dark Ranger, what are you doing there? Lost in the woods, eh? Oh, there's a bash. Coil, okay, with the DK. Yep. It's only three units, so he can't be surrounded. Blood Mage a little bit late to the party. Good new, good heal. Nice exchanges between the two, fighting for 10 minutes straight, pretty much, due to 1 to zero's uh, timing push. But Sock is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. If you get some levels on the second and third hero, definitely game. Knights hard counter to fiends, Mountain King hard counter to everything, as 1 to zero continues to ignore Banshees. Sweet web. There has to be a nuke somehow. It's so hard to stop this MK. He's constantly full mana.
There might be a chance by 1 to 0 to wait for the staffs and then nuke the herd units. That's some good experience there. Close to level 2 on the pally. Very close, actually. The 1 to 0 is getting some amazing kills. This is a good 1 to 0 performance. High level 4 and 3, got a heal scroll too. It's mostly single target damage, so heal scroll not great. Speaking of not great, I can't stop the next ad. Used all the snooze buttons. So, let's see what these dragon hawks can do. Blood mage! Being staffed, but he's right there! DK's around! Out of nowhere! Nukes his way out of there. And the knight falls in return. Used as a little bit of a bait. Dragon Hawks chasing, but I think they're too slow. Mountain King has one target and one target only. There's another Storm Bolt. There's no way out. This DK is dead, isn't he? Bash! And that's movement speed gone and healing gone. And maybe the nail in the coffin for 1 to 0. Oh, Pally! He was only 1.9! Was looking for that Divine Shield. No staff in that very moment. And without Holy Light. Oh, three points around. Can't even finish my point because there's so much action. Nova, ready? Maybe? Dark Ranger, dead! And that's Blood Mage level 2. So, you thought you had problems before? Against the Storm Bolt? Wait for the Banish Bolt. And then wait for the Banish Bolt Holy Light. Strongest nuke in the game. It's a, it's insane. It's absurd. That combo is ridiculous. DK is back, but no mana. Destroy us. Can't really catch up with them anymore. The statues are falling. Free rain. And the Pally is back too. No... Expansion on the back of these attacks. Just a little bit of siphon every now and then is very annoying. DK is playing with his life here. Destro's no chance. To do anything of value. No mana lich, no mana DK. If you see the paladin starting to nuke, you know the human is very confident. New Superman back to back cast. I mean, your normal work day is also eight hours, probably, right? So. Oh. No coil! And of course he gets the bash, lol! GG. Sock takes it, struggling big time in the early. Perfect bash timing, of course. And Sock ties it up for Korea. 1 1 now. That was a fun human undead, especially from the human perspective. And now it's down to China, who they throw in next. By the way, Blizzard, did you see how strong that Mountain King was? After seeing this, do you think he needs to be buffed? Just asking questions. Just asking questions here. 
Yo, Yannick, what's up? This <laughs> all. I'm just pointing them into the right direction. That's what good advisors do, even though they don't pay me. <laughs> oh man, this is a good day of Warcraft. In general, dude, how awesome were September and October so far? It was TS new. Oh, that was the map. Ah, thank you. Still bright number day. My pleasure. Neo always balance whining? What the fuck? Me? I'm not balance whining. I'm balance suggestion whining. That's a way different thing. You kidding me. Last week I was toxic. Now I'm a balance whiner. Insane. You guys are insane. Woo! Speaking of insane! We got a sweet little match coming up, everybody! China is throwing their MVP into the mix. He was in the grand final of TP League, ladies and gentlemen, and... Now he's supposed to defeat Sock. And reclaim the throne. Fortitude coming. And we gotta wait a minute and then we're in game. <laughs> it's insane how beautiful you are. <laughs> oh, Mommy, you're so sweet as always. Human mirror on... Oh. Okay, I wasn't... Like, I'm, for once I'm honest with you guys, I didn't follow this competition because Remo is casting it usually and I got my hands tied with the Rara, Orga and all the other stuff that's going on. So I wasn't necessarily aware of this, but Amazonia is the map and you know my feelings about Amazonia. I might not be balance whining, but I'm definitely and will forever be Amazonia whining. I was very hyped to see Undead vs. Human on TS. I'm, um, let's say, less hyped to see Human Mirror on AZ. But, maybe they surprise me and show me the way of how to play this. All right, China one, Korea one. Fortitude in the upper right hand side in the blue, sock bottom left hand side. He's the current king. Fortitude was chosen by Team China, who have uh, Fly still in the mix as well as Colorful. My God, this Chinese team just got a lot better. Fortitude, absolute god in the mirror match. Plus, it's his map choice where he's most comfortable. Why hate this map? Why not hate this map? The only reason to like this map is that there's a Zirkling here and there's a flying sheep which looks funny somewhere around here currently. How many nation, uh, how many players does each nation have in this format? Well, it depends. <laughs> uh, prior to today, China had five players, Korea had five players, Europe has four players. China added two players to the mix, apparently that's allowed. So per week you can select four players. As this goes on for like four weeks or something. Okay, the third cool thing, which is kind of like the second and a half cool thing, is the Zirkling can be possessed. So that's kind of interesting. Players 
We love this map because Remo got a mental breakdown with some clamors ago and all chatted. What? <sighs> okay. Well, well, well. Archmage opener, footy opener, standard. Question is, is someone expanding or not? Classic and only viable creeper out here. Claws and ring. Kinda nice for Sock. A player's force Remo broke in Moonverse Colorful. Oh, let me guess, it was a stalemate bear mirror. Yeah, we've had one of those, some of those. Okay, now we're contesting the goblins. And it looks like Fortitude, as so often, has the upper hand in these early game encounters. Europe needs more players, but Hawk says we don't need another player because we need more money and if you add more players, it's a higher share. Well, that's a little short-sighted, isn't it? Because if you win more, you get more money. And I would say, with a Foggy and a Starbuck, they would have way better chances to win something. Or Leon. Uh, but I can see that there's some reason also not to play. And that is totally fine. So, suck with the boots, 40 with the boots. Ooh, 40 is late with the shop, isn't he? Well, that's a lack of healing. Tech-wise, it's fairly similar. And then a I think is there is a... Oh, Lumber Mill here? Early Lumber Mill by Sock? Are we not getting Breaker Wars? Hmm, that would be sweet. Yeah, that would be a positive surprise. We get MKs as so often the Amazonia games rather slow. Number mill is good for Expo at tier 2. True. But... Isn't that like incredibly risky as you have to creep with your back towards the map with slow and... Stun. We do get the double sanctums. From 40's perspective, definitely understandable. He's the best break and mirror player in the world. You can make an argument that he's the best break and mirror player of all time. At his peak. Oh, easy last hit! Doesn't get it! 40! Wake up! But now 40 has to TP, huh? 
Oh, 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 Mountain King kill, but the item goes to Sock. Okay, this is quite crazy. Sock has a huge XP lead on his Archmage. Little unfortunate that the Mountain King died last second. Now I'm curious how Sock gets, uh, how Fortitude gets out of there. Just with straight up better fighting? Are under TP loss on this map, mm, probably not the worst. Did an expert, man. On both sides. Okay. If you uh, need a drink or a snack or, you know, Saturday afternoon, grab a piece of pie, maybe. Oh, <laughs> I just remembered that I got a gift yesterday. By good old Qbert, who got me something that I was looking for for pretty much a decade. The human army is better than your army. Exactly. That's what it is. Alrighty, let's go. We got a mana potion on Sock and we got two claws on Sock. We also got a mana potion on 40 though, so both were kind of lucky. Let the hammer fall, everybody. Sweet snipe on the priest. Sock decides to take the footman out. Faster reinforcements, of course, on Fortitude's side. Got the better sustain. Hard to say. Pretty... Oh, Fortitude. But priest snipe time. Oh. But are you overstaying your welcome? Trying to snipe the Mountain King? No invul potion? Could be swapping the town portal, but not before another bolt. If he's getting bashed. Whoa! What? Oh my god! Uh. Why did you not pass the TP? Is the Archmage that squishy? And then he gets the bash and he's dead. That was a bit questionable and also very unlucky. Yo, that's a solid hold, guys. And that's the way to get back into the base. Into the base? Into the race. The human attack. army is better than your army. There we go. Archmage has some sick DPS. But Fortitude, or neither of the players, used the big mana potion. But Sock's Mountain King benched. Fortitude's Mountain King level 2. Go snipe them priests! Breakers are streaming in. So that's fine. But yeah, supply lead, level lead. Bit unfortunate for 40 that he doesn't have the brilliance already yet. So let's see if we can reach level 3 there. One kill is level 4. And then it's basically limitless mana on this dwarf. But so far, the only kills are going towards Sock, who's catching up on level 3. But you know, Stormbolt equals kill. Expo for his expo. A Both running. Are under town is under Tricky situation. Though. That's level four. We got devotion aura. Items for 40 are amazing. 
Supply is amazing. Upgrades lacking. But we're getting there. And I think Devotion is an upgrade in itself, so that's fine. And I struggle to see a way out of here for Sock. The levels are evened out in terms of just pure numbers, but Fortitude is reaching level 4 very, very, very soon. Boop, there we go. See? That was as soon as it gets. Footmen were attacking the peasants. Love that little addition. Sock, you have to come up with something here on the fly, very fast. That's not gonna be easy. How do you even out 13 food and a level? In. and a devotion aura. In Breaker Mirror. There was a chance in this game. Oh, with the Mountain King kill, maybe! In for potion, and now things swing around. Not again, the bash! Dude! How unlucky is Sock? How unlucky can you be? Twice a bash. Twice. Well, now with your Blizzard Entertainment, you might uh, think, yeah, that's why we reduce the percentage of bash. <laughs> ah, don't change it. Don't change it. All right, so far, whoever has map choice wins the game. You know, it's unbelievable. Yeah, right? As if maps are a determining factor here, Tilly. <laughs> okay, China takes it back, two and one. And now it's down to Korea. To set the next opponent. This will be Lino Moon. I'd say Moon. You're asking if this is a Tillerman soundboard? Uh, well, maybe. So 40 stays on. Uh, yeah, very curious what will happen here. China two wins away. They also got fly and colorful left. Korea has Moon and Lindo. I think fly. Shouldn't really be a match for either Lin or Moon. But Colorful, man. Colorful all killed Team Europe. That came as a surprise. And I keep an eye on Flow TV. Let's see if they decided yet. Is Lynn ready after losing the series to Happy? Or is it gonna be Moon who will join us at Rara Land? Colorful never all killed Team America. America. Um, yeah, I guess you don't have a team, huh? Yo, Neo, beard looking great. Oh, thank you. Uh.
Well, <laughs> we can theor theory craft about the lineups all we want. But I'd say nobody would guess the upcoming opponent. Because we didn't know that he's in the lineup. It's time to bring out focus. And I want to see a lot of focus pocus emotes in the chat. They never reached out because they knew we would win. If it's a two and two, well, are you even still good in two and two? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, focus coming. I did not expect, I didn't know that he's in. So maybe Moon and Lin aren't in the lineup. But lol, I don't focus. Like, who knows? So I guess, are we like halfway? And everyone had the ch Yeah, we are halfway. Uh, so maybe everyone had the chance to add to the lineup. Which kind of makes sense. Good to see that not only China added people to the lineup. That would have been interesting. In a minute, we're going to join the game. Good to see Focus. He will also join us at Rara Land. Very, very cool. Since uh, he has a very good friend in, in Germany. And they were all heartbroken when they couldn't meet last year. Because Focus uh, didn't qualify. But now... Now they can. A big reunion. They've been to each other's weddings. And now the big reunion in Dortmund. Ain't that lovely how Warcraft 3 unites people. You know, it's unbelievable. Exactly, Tilly. Good to have a coke caster. Neo, do you have kids? I watch over probably 10,000 Warcraft 3 enthusiasts. And that's all the childish behavior that I need in my life. Daddy Neo. Oh, I'm not too sure if I want to be called that. Let's go, everybody. We got two fine people. 40. No, that's the wrong slide. That's the right slide. 40 versus focus. Wait, what? It doesn't seem right. How is focus the best orc when there's a Lin? Yeah, this is... There we go. Not updated. There we have it. Second best human versus second best orc. On Concealed Hill, if 40 wins, China has match points. More loon! Thank you for the sub, mate! And if Focus wins, this clan war is tied. Liquipedia Warcraft regular seasons need to be integrated. Right now it's only the finals. ESL deleted all the archives. So, if there's someone who has the results, feel free to implement it. We struggle for years to get these results. Thank you, Lacrest Fallen, for the three euros. Now that the word daddy has been so sexualized, what are your children supposed to call you, bruh? Puppy? God, Emperor, Creator, Provider, Mountain King. Let's go. Love it. Mountain King sees more and more play and more and more matchups. And 40 will show us the way. Ah! 
Are the groups for your Rara drawn yet? Nope. But um, it's not groups anymore. I mean, it's kind of groups, but it's not like last time. Uh, it's two separate double elimination brackets instead of two round robin groups. That I can say. And it's 16 players instead of 12. Nice saves. And that didn't accomplish too much, did it? Fast tech, lots of gold. And now grunts, but the Mountain King is hunting for these grunts. A player's is Rara sold out? Attack. Yep. Completely sold out. In three minutes. Pitching. There is a Discord where there's a ticket exchange, so maybe you're lucky there. I know someone upgraded from viewer to player and, you know, you may be lucky. Ooh, Fortitude didn't tech yet. It's Mountain King expansion on Concealed. This is so risky and so fragile. I'm very curious how he wants to pull that off. With passing kills um, is, is not the real answer here, I guess. If the wolf last hits, Mountain King got it, all right. And gets a little bit more tanky. What's Focus's answer? T TC Counter Expo. Radar Walker TC. Are under attack. It's gonna be hard to stop the Mountain King once he's online. That's always the problem. Problem is get, getting there. No chain lightning yet. Very, very little progress for focus, but that's due to the nature of the build. He is slowing down this expansion significantly though by getting peasant kill number like three and four. The player's forces are under attack. Doesn't want to be exposed to a storm bolt anymore. Rather go home, rather start creeping. And I feel if you're focused, you're comfortable. 40 still needs minutes to get to tier 2. And needs to distract and harass for even more minutes to catch up. And there's no water elementals that can delay an expansion. So tech vs expo, pretty classic. He has to use footman to scout in absence of water elementals. And yeah, Stormbolt 2 is a big weapon, and that harass at the Natural expansion went really well earlier for focus now shoes on the other foot mountain king has boots There's no stomp yet. There's no way really to stop this dwarf Unless there's raiders and ensnare and there will be soon But will this Jesus just fall bash? Oh, no Dude mountain king terrorizing this the the, the Koreans Well, to be honest, it terrorized 1 to 0 as well. So that's fair. To a degree. The bashes are insane. Attack. 
And that's how you buy time for your expansion and your tech. <laughs> Thank you, Screwin, for the one year resub. Keep mentioning it. We need them to not buff the MK. Will you quit again if he gets buffed? Around. Man, 40 is playing this really, really well. A player's forces are under attack. Thousand gold. Tech almost done. No chance for focus to counter expand. No levels at all. And the lineup change is definitely benefiting, benefiting, oh, tough word, Team China here. Are under attack. Second Rex going into rifles, Archmage coming as well. This expansion is heavily delayed. At least levels are coming together and we got a bit of claw for a little bit of extra damage. Yeah, 40 definitely not fluctuating this much between his performances as he oftentimes does. Like, this is on point, man. I don't know what it is, but if there's a team competition and 40 is playing, you can add like 10 to 15% to his regular performance. That has always been the case for any China Korea competition, for Lao Pao Esports Club competition. It's amazing. He just cares about his team. Screw him, thank you for the sub. Did I just say that? It doesn't matter. So focus, despite a disastrous mid game, slowly but steady it's coming together. Players forces are under attack. Second expo attempt, levels are getting there. Problem is though that 40 is already at 60 food. Archmage is out too, like the fragile state of human has been survived, gold spent. And it's a shockwave build. No more lames getting meta, huh? If I had a hammer, no TP. Oh, dodges the bolt with an invo potion. He was definitely waiting for that. Controls to, controls the dwarf with a net, calls for the pickaxes. And with that, that is a defense here. It's just too much stuff on one base. Can't really afford it too much. A player's forces are under attack. The speed shockwave, but the damage values on level 1, you know it, not the greatest. 40 definitely getting caught in a bad-ish position here, but these raiders are not made for fighting, you know it. It's rather the grunts and they got killed early. It's nighttime. the TC has no inventory, no more! Hammer to the head, and the militia arrest him. The Popo is on the task, and Fortitude is smashing this fight, it's not even funny. A player's forces are under attack. And Expo just got up. Uh, this is looking fantastic. I'm having a hard time imagining how you get back from this. Four, you got the mana! Kill him! Throw him! Alright, we're getting kills here. Stormbolt, no TP, no staff. Sir. 
almost this around. Kinda. Kodo. Weird. <laughs> Telly stab. That's, a, that's gonna be a bash. Oh! 11 HP. I was so sure this is a bash. But, I mean, look at the numbers. Supply, 40. Levels, 40. Um, yeah, that's it. That's, those are the numbers. We get slow in the mix. We got to shop up for more mana. We got the double heal scroll. Ay -ay -ay. Mission impossible, full focus. Yeah, Fortitude uh, probably wins this game in his sleep from here on out. DC dead with a bash, of course. And while Spirit Link distributed the damage a little bit, this will only lead to a downfall. Farsia surrounded. This wasn't Focus's best performance, I'd say. He's doing fine ish for the situation he was in. But now it's five and four and three to one for Team China as Fortitude gets the W here. Despite a late fast expansion... Oops, what the hell? Despite a late fast expansion, despite a solid early surround... Mountain King, guys! Mountain King! Wee, yoi, 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 yoi. Team China with match points. And now, we don't really know Who's the last man standing for Korea? But there's only one person left. Could be Moon or Lin or maybe Lawliot. Who knows? So uh, I don't know the lineup yet. I'm sending you into a small little break. I'm gonna be right back. Perfect timing. Such a professional broadcaster. All I need is 130. Hello and thank you, Crazy1993, for the two month resub. So, I ask the admins who's left for Team Korea? It's gonna be Moon. So, 40 has to kill um, Moon and then China wins. Moon still has to go through 40. Fly and colorful, I think. That's tough. 
That's really tough. Reverse sweep moon, let's go. Hmm. Hmm. We'll see about that. Game is up. We're starting on Twisted. Of course, we go for Moon Meadows, eh? If Moon loses now, it's GG for China. Yep. So far, 40 and 1 to 0 did a fine, fine job. And it's really hard to win matches against map pick. It's really hard. One minute, guys. One minute left, and then we start the game. Is it MK on that map as well for 40? Or is he going back to Archmage? And will it be a Warden by Moon? I don't think so, but I'm getting a lot of compliments for my beard today. You guys are so sweet. Thank you. All that testosterone has to go somewhere, eh? Dude, I could... This is so awesome. I got the Tillerman soundboard back. It's amazing. Only old schoolers will understand. Game up. So, can 40 claim the match points? And will China pick up even more momentum after all killing Europe? Can they make it a 4 1? That would be quite incredible, guys. At the moment, it's Moon against China. 40 colorful still waiting as well as fly. So, if you want more games, you're rooting for Moon now. Ooh, we start creeping against the shop. I like that. 40 with the altar towards the north. Which could mean Archmage. It is the Demon Hunter. Yeah, Moon, seriously not a Warden player, huh? No sound? Sound is only for subs. Since you are a sub, I give you sound. So, the most standard opener, I would say. No Mountain King here in this matchup yet. And Demon Hunter still terrorizing the poor peasants.
players forces and, uh, are under attack. I mean, don't have to say it, but the human army is better than your army. So Moon has to find ways to stop him now. Moon detonate, he sees what he expected to see. Sobi mask, dude! Oi, that's a lot of mana, that's a lot of water elementals. That's a pretty strong opener. Demon Hunter's rushing across. He is equipped very, very well, though. He basically wears a crown of kings, circlet, and ring of the Archmagi. Both can be very, very happy here. And 40, I was about to say, is fooling Moon a bit. He was going to the left-hand side to interrupt the natural expansion creep Players immediately. But uh -uh, we're going south with that expo. As the footman is harassing here, getting a bit of attention. Uh, off of the main army. There was a, a lot of time invested for that wisp. And now where's the demon hunter at? Roaming in the middle. Interesting. Not uh, too sure what to do. Boots? Staff? Just boots. No staff. Players no money. Forces are under attack. And 40 still uh Okay, now going for that expo. At least Moon got the information of where he has to go. But yo, here's the demon hunter, and there's the immolation. And that always leads to Oh what a save! 3 HP. But I can another save. Let me finish my sentence. Okay, always leads to kills. But that was some sick saves. Archer here in position to intercept the returning peasants. But Archmage gets the entire camp. That's level 3. And that's what he needs. It's no mana burn. So water elemental for days. Thanks to the Sobi mask. And also claws plus 8. Like 40's items are amazing. And Moon. He got a lot of wisps. Like they are there. But no all in. Just straight up, no counter expansion yet either. And that was pretty clean, guys. Forty is playing this really well, and Moon has to find a way to crack this nut. Weird that Moon didn't dive more on top of the creeping. I agree. But there we go. Good defense, man. Just maneuvering the peasants around. This does cost build time, of course. But sick, sick, sick saves. Is it just me, or is Moon getting a bit outplayed? Okay, now we got a little uh, more fuel. He can reveal again. That's a good trade. Town portal for a scan. No, oh, I was so worried that he wouldn't be looking. Forty is scouting here for his forty should be scouting everywhere for expansions that he is. This is looking really good for forty two. So 
so now this is the timing of the game where we just distract and try to ruin the tech tree. And again, not having water, uh, not having mana burn with waterlements in your base with a lore as offensive as this. Things are getting a bit stressful here as we harass on both sides. But leveling up the panda has been stopped while we buy time on Fortitude's tech. This lore kill is brutal. The Shredder is now the static defense. Ha, <laughs> the block. He can re he's repairing the Shredder. Love to see it, man. 40, tippy top shape. This will get a bit easier once Abolish is done. Dude, 40 is a beast right now. Can't wait for the next TP League where he's uh, challenging Happy again. And 40 just wanted to buy time. <laughs> that was successful. Players forces are under attack. And you gotta reskill at some point, right? Okay, there was a couple of kills here. Three units dead. Whoops. Wanna rotate out anyway though. There's a staff. 45 wouldn't have gotten him with emulation, so saving some mana. Instant tier three, masonry upgrade, mountain king second, blacksmith. Uh, this mass air, then, eh? Late blacksmith, always a tell for mass air. And towers as well. Sure. Um. Moon. Uh, you would gotta need your experience now to turn this around. Hey, does that make sense? No, it doesn't. Could also be tanks. Players Correct. Players. Could also be tanks. But against the panda, demon hunter, I think rather mass air. See? Dude, I love this shredder. This has been such a great addition, and now you gotta push with the panda on level one with one breath. That's all. Stopped. Push stopped. Mess enter panda second. Dude, he slowed down the panda progress. For minutes now. So yeah, this is problematic. At least we got tier 3 and bears. But 40 is rapidly catching up. Yo Arch, sup? Thank you for the two year, dude. Big anniversary, love it, thank you. It's probably the strongest timing that Moon has, and it's not looking good at all. Not opening the base, Demon Hunter under fire, love to see that Ritu though, Care Bear coming in at the perfect time. And this is of course always good experience, Panda's leveling up, Archmage is a decent chasing for... what? 40 needs time. Are under attack. Knight's Griff's coming. No reaction by Moon yet. I'm very surprised he didn't try to expand earlier. Archmage got a potion. Can he block him there? Doesn't need it. This game is getting wild. Action happening on three different spots on the map. Got a macro up here. Oh! 
we got cancelled! Ay, 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 ay. Precision by 40. Pally up, animal war train. Perfect counter to bears. Heroes mm, in favor of moon, but not critical. Good distract to my moon, though. This is so fortified. Expo now here. Moon, what is your counter to the griffins? Good shadow melt, but man, storm bolt and griffin attacks. It's not even storm hammers. It's just a regular attacks. And that's number two. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> what can I do? Yeah, <laughs> that was uh, a Scottish moon impersonator. Okay, we're getting wins now. What else? More health on the demon? Never wrong. Yo, you need the craziest levels. On these heroes to stand a chance. So we mask rope, clause plus eight, staff coming online. A player's forces are under attack. 40 only at 60 though. There's level 3. Ooh. Thing is, with griffins and knights, you can creep like crazy. And that's what the Mountain King wants. That's what the Paladin wants. And it feels like 40 has a pretty good idea of that expansion bottom right. He's beelining it up. A player's forces are under attack. It's not good. It's not good if you're a moon fan. If you want more games, it's all not good. <laughs> Expansion just disappeared in seconds. I mean, it has heavy armor. There's a lot of griffs, but yeah, like. That's just sick. At the moment, anti-air is lacking. No gyros, no dragon hawks. Sees it now, answers immediately. And Moon wasted two expansions here. It's, uh, it's a lot of gold. We still don't have storm hammers. We got level four now. Devotion aura lining up plus two on everything. Apart from that. Only one attack upgrade. Once the dragon hawks are out, I worry a lot. How about the state of the towers? Okay, still 10 seconds on him. So we'll fight him. He might not even need the dragon hawks if he gets the towers. Five seconds. Mm. What a bait. Shekel, shekel. And that's tower time now. Ready. This is unwinnable. This is unwinnable. Bears falling. Dryads, not a real impact. At least the hippos live. But there's also now Gyros. The Demon Hunter is out of the fight. More Dragon Hawks streaming in. Also a solid solution to Dryads. Panda, who's supposed to be the carry, wiped off the map giving you double level three. And as we said in the beginning, human army is better than your army. Absolutely correct. Thank you very much for that expert analysis.
And oh my, Fortitude, three wins in a row. Alongside 1-2-0, killing Team Korea. China on a roll now. 4-0 versus Europe. 4-1 versus Korea. That's insanely strong. With the addition of 1-2-0 and Fly, they definitely stepped up their game. And that... was really freaking strong. Especially by 40. Like... Sock, no match. Focus, no match. Moon, no match. You know, it's unbelievable. I think so too. So, yo, that's it. That was a quickie. And uh, China, they needed to play some catch up here. Wow, the fine people of Liquipedia have already updated. Uh, China 2 and 4. But yeah, they are catching up. That's of course a little blow to South Korea as well, who had the lead. Tomorrow, it's time for Korea versus Europe. And they will steal each other's points. Uh, we have four more play days. And then we'll see what we get. Like... A, a, a new rejuvenile... Rejuvenile? Rejuvenated Team China. Korea struggling a bit. Europe limited lineup. Hmm, it's lining up to be... Lining up to be a nice uh, run to the finish line here. I am excited for that. So now I have tons and tons and tons of office work to do, which is... <sighs> I'm also hungry. I also gotta get groceries. I should also really clean my flat. That's a lot of stuff to do for only seven hours left on the day. I appreciate you all a lot. Shout out to Norwegian Well for the show match earlier. It was an amazing one. Happy versus Lynn, best of seven. Go watch it if you haven't seen it yet. Um... Also, shout out to Team China and Team Korea. Later tonight, Jim King of the Hill at 8 p.m. at Baron TV. I will certainly be in the chat and following. It is less than three weeks to Rara Land. I can't wait to see a lot of you guys. Uh, support Warcraft, spread the word about how amazing the pro scene is at the moment, how amazing these games are. I'm certainly very happy to see these games. PTR is coming as well, leave your feedback everywhere. But yeah, most important, spread the word. If you can, and you have the means, a uh, little pocket money, feel free to check out back to warcraft.com slash support. We have multiple ways where you can support us, either via Patreon, Relatively uh, simple way to support us on a reoccurring basis. You can sub here on Twitch. You can aim for a YouTube membership as we are now streaming on YouTube as well. Thanks to Twitch allowing this. Uh, you can throw us a one-time donation if you don't like to give the money to Google or Amazon. Give it to us directly. We also take your crypto. You can get ready for the winter. We offer hoodies and hats with our logo and money on at our merchandise store and we're sponsored by Holy Energy and Ice Tea. Check them out. Startup company from Berlin doing great products and throwing more and more flavors your way. As I said, appreciate you all. Not normal that 3,500 people are watching a 21-year-old game and sell out events in three minutes. Um, yeah. So... It's really cool that you enable us to do this. Take care, everybody. Tomorrow we're back with Korea versus Europe. Remo Demo casting at 3 p.m. Bye-bye.
ignored your civil rights You demanded I eternize your name Walk ahead You cover us in shame and I take the blame Living by the rules to which high school blues Walk 